I'm Mike Sod and I'm standing here in the locker room of the Artificial Intelligence Department of Edinburgh University. Heavy Explorers have been coming here for the past four years, but I've only been doing it for two. And on the first day I came here, I started on the button box which Geoffrey is working on down here. And what have you been working on? And squares, triangles, stars, and diamonds. Well, could you show us how to do a square? Yes, well, you the forward 20, right 90, forward 20, right 90, forward 20, right 90, forward 20 again. And how do you use the define button? The define button records it as many times as you want. Um, for instance, a square. Right 90, forward 20, right 90, forward 20, and right 90. Now you would end it and run it. My right 90 too short, but... Well, as you can see, the turtle just looks like a lump of a canal, which is perfectly right. It's just got a motor for each wheel at either side, and there's a pen down the middle which draws the line. Now, as you can see, the big disadvantage of this is that it can only do straight lines. So to be able to do curves and more complicated drawings, you would need to move on to one of the teletypes, and one of the drawing machines which has a job to go through it. Now, David and Mark are working on a teletype over here. They're trying to draw on the display screen, and the drawing will appear up here. Are you able to do a spiral, say? Uh -huh. I'll put it. rubber out first. Mm. Um. Yeah, that's going to do a square one. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 Now, the spiral is a procedure in Logos' own memory, and it's stored there from David's memory. Well, these are just basic drawings, but Logo is really used for doing simple math, which is learnt on this primer here. It takes quite a while to learn the top, but once you do finish it, you use more complicated math on the worksheets. Now, Ian down here is working on, on one just now. And what's it about? They were plotting points in a graph with an x-axis and a y-axis. I plot the points by <coughs> typing in something like set x, um, negative 400, and then then I'll type in set, then I'll type in set y. 400 and if I wanted to draw a line to another coordinate I'd type in line and put a bracket um, four, 400 negative 400 Does it help you at school with your maths? It helps me in my geometry and helps me to understand integers. Oh, thanks Ian. Now, Michael, you've been working on the same theme, maths. And so what is it you've been doing? I've been doing clock arithmetic. Can you do that? Here we are, put it on your so we can start. And we start by putting a clock face on the paper. I'm putting 
six, so I just did the usual two out of six. Um, I was to six hour clock, and it's like working in base six. Once you you start at one, two, three, up till five, but when you get till six, you don't go until seven, but you start at one again. Start the hand at four. Four, four, and then I'll go. I'll go to one. And over on this teletype, Scott Carl has been working alongside me for the past few months on something different. On what is this difference you've been working on? I've been working on getting logo to generate poetry. Is it quite easy to do? Not really. Well, maybe so we could understand it. Could you show us at all? Yes, we've got a note to go over here. With poem one, we just had the had logo choosing random words and putting in the form of poem. With poem two. We had a uh, logo choosing words which had with parts of speech, like this poem up here. Title, Growing Blood, and then the poem, After the title, Blooming Dead, Hear the Guns, You See Overhead. Then with poem three, not only did it have parts of speech, but it also had um, the meaning, like this poem here, A Still Peace for Love, which is the title, and then By a Black Black Cloud, Rose of Sorrow. Morning Falls Dry by a Sunset, and still Peace and Love are all the same thing. Is it possible to get them to rhyme at all? Well, not yet. We're still working on that. Are you working on one just now? Yes. Can you show me what you're actually doing then? Yes, well, I'm, I'm getting to print out words. The order which has been printed before is article, adjective, adjective, noun, and then a full stop, and then two spaces. Then there's got preposition, article, adjective, adjective, noun, full stop, and then it goes into a new line. Verb, article, noun, new line again, noun, verb, adjective, and then another new line, and preposition, article, noun, and then the final full stop. In this I've, I've printed out my poem three and start to print the poem following the order which I said before, which goes article, adjective, adjective, noun, full stop, two spaces, and then preposition, article, adjective, adjective, noun, full stop, and then it's gone down the rest of the poem. Thank you, Scott. Now, while Scott's been working on his poetry, as I said before, I've been working on my own thing, which is moving pictures about the screen. In other words, making movies. Now, to do this, you use a GT42, which is this screen here. And this moves the pictures about the screen, as well as having to draw them themselves. Now, what I'm going to show you now is how the pictures move across the screen. Now, include puts the picture on the screen to start with. Circle is the name of the picture, and zero, zero, zero is the coordinates, first zero being the x axis, next zero being the y, and zero the heading of which it's going to move off next, and then down which puts the arrow on the picture. Now the screen goes blank and then the picture just pops up in these coordinates which will obviously be the centre. Now to move it you print in the command move and then the name of the picture again.
the direction it's going to move, which is forward, and the distance it will move. And this will be 50 units in this case. Well, I have a little procedure of my own, which is a race between two pitches across the screen. I'll show you here. Now, start will set the get it get the position set up with the finishing line in the two pictures. Of course, it'll wipe the circle out of the way first. Now, O1 and O2 are the pictures in the race. And that's the finishing line going up the side just now. And one and two, which are the pictures racing. Now 100 meters will set them starting. And the computer will pick a random number and move that move one of the pictures that certain number. One's got a good start there. Two's catching up. Seems to feel fairly even at the moment. Oh, one's slowed down. So is two. Oh, sprint for the line by one. One's almost one's clinched just at the line. Well, of course, movie logo can be used for all sorts of things, like in maths, to help using graphs to show, help pupils in the logarithm to learn it and also you can use it to make cartoons and things like that now the last thing we're going to look at in the logarithm is a project which Neil Morrison has been working on and he's been trying to work this crane here now what have you been getting it to do? I've been getting the boom to raise and lower and the bucket to drop and rise as with the turtle you can use the button box to control Meccano um, by pressing these buttons. When I press this one, it will rise or fall. You can use it in the same way and make it ri rise. You can also make mo both motors run by pressing this button and make them do the opposite. Um, you can also define procedures by pressing the define button and then defining anything you want without actually the crane moving. Thank you, Neil. Well, these are just a few of the things that Logo has been used for, but there's just one more thing I haven't told you about. You may, may remember at the beginning there was some strange music. Well, that was composed by Logo on the music box. So to play us out now at the end, we'll play some more. Goodbye. <laughs>